This one is called the Icarus. Definitely works better on spinning pole. Could you make it work on static? Yes, it will just take significantly more effort. This is one of those moves that the spin, the centripetal force helps pull you into the pole. And this particular move, the points of contact are a little sketchy at best. And so that little bit of centripetal force that we get from the spin is definitely gonna help you hold the move. Um, also common question on this one is which direction to spin. Yes, you can spin either direction on this one, but I do find spinning backwards into this one, the way that I'm, I'm going to show you here, um, I find pushes me more into the contact points that I wanna have. Once again, much like the static to spin question, can you spin the other direction? Yes, will it make it harder? Yes, but if you're up for the challenge, go for it. Do you, boo. Okay, so for this one, real quick before we start, let's talk about our points of contact. Okay, so, and also on that little tidbit, Icarus is one of those elusive moves, as in I know pullers that have been pulling for years and can't figure out how to make this one stick. There is one little secret sauce ingredient that I will get to as we get through here, okay? So even if you're like, I've heard these points of contact before, wait till I get started. Anyways, okay, so points of contact. Um, we are going to be starting in a twisted grip initially, but the very last thing to come off is going to be that top arm. So whichever arm is your top arm in this entrance, and we are going to be going from kind of a blind hand grab um, entrance on this one, um, it's going to be the opposite knee to hand. And keep in mind on that too, it's not just your knee pit the way that you would feel from a leg hang there should be a significant amount of contact on the outside of the thigh, okay? Which is one of the key points that we're gonna get into as far as you wanna make sure that your butt is back so we're getting more the side of the thigh and not the back of the thigh, okay? So if you are currently strategizing your grip points and where to apply all of that secret grip, I'm telling you right now how to prep, okay? So side of your thigh, think like that IT band area, back of the knee pit, your upper back, back of your neck, those of you pullers, that like to pull with your hair down, I would say this is definitely one of those moves that it is going to make it significantly more challenging. I find even with my messy little poof thing I got going here, it still sometimes gets in the way, okay? So you're definitely gonna wanna have that point of contact on your upper traps and the back of your neck for this one, okay? And then the back of the arm or the shoulder here. So very similar contact point on that one as you would have in a leg hang. You know, when we go into a leg hang, how you kind of reach back with that arm and you feel that contact point there, okay? So those three are going to be your primary. Um, as much as I say back of the neck and traps, whichever is your top arm, you are gonna feel it more on that shoulder because when we do take that top arm off, we're gonna reach it back, which is gonna give you a little bit more, you know, it's not that the pole's gonna be going straight across here, it's gonna be kind of on a diagonal across your back. Whoop, like this. Okay, so it is kind of coming a little bit more to that shoulder. Okay, so if you have to strategize your attire, your grip points, where to put all of that, you know, pixie dust, that's going to give you that magical sticky power that you need. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be doing it low, and I would recommend starting with your Icarus low, because there is this little leap of faith at the very end where you're like, am I good, when you go to release that top hand. You don't want to start this one up high, okay? So if you do have visions of grandeur of doing this move up high, definitely start with this approach. These same cues work from up high too, from dropping down to it, but in this particular tutorial, we're just covering this low entrance, which I think is gorgeous, okay? So we're gonna start with a blind hand grab spin. You might already be comfortable with that, but we're just gonna real quick kind of go over getting into this. Basically, we're gonna do a pirouette into it. If you wanna make it flashy and give it big flares, things like that, awesome, do you. You know, give it all the bedazzle and all that. But for now, we're just keeping it, you know, relatively on the down low, mellow on that first turn because our goal is to get to the Icarus, okay? So we're gonna step, outside foot is gonna step towards the pole. My inside hand is gonna slide up the pole, unlock my thumb, put it next to my fingers, push the pole to my wrist, go under my armpit so I can rotate and end up in a twisted grip, okay? So that's how I'm gonna enter into this first spin. My bottom hand, or what was my outside hand, is going to, as I pirouette through, it's gonna reach across fingers down, palm away, so it can grab the pole, okay? So that then when I finish, my arms are in this position here. Okay, so the top arm is in a twisted grip, the bottom arm is palm away. Opposite direction it would be if you're going to like a handspring, okay? So we're gonna start with just that spin. 
Initially with this, um, the spin looks a little bit different for everyone based on strength, preference, body, you know, proportions, things, all those things, and your space that you have to pull. You might not have room to have your legs stick out very far, okay? In this particular one, when I do it, I like to push away with my bottom arm. That's totally optional. When you start with this one, you can have the pole already touching your back, or you can push away either way. But then when we do take it to the Icarus, we are then going to pull it in, okay? So what the first part of the spin looks like, whether you have space, no space, you pick, okay? So we're doing this first little pirouette into this spin here. We're here. From here, first thing we're gonna do is bring our inside leg forward. Now we pull in and place that knee, okay? So real important on this, when you do go to place that knee. So initially, part of the reason why I like this particular entrance here is that going from this blind hand grab spin into this, it really pushes my hips back over here to the side, they're not in line with the pole, they're back. Then when I bring that leg through, I've got this kind of booty out position, which is crucial for the Icarus, okay? So if my hips are even with the pole and I hook this knee, when I go to try and release my top hand, things are not gonna stick, okay? So really important on this one is having that, your booty is way back here. When we're midway into that spin, when we're ready to start transitioning to the Icarus, Bring this inside leg forward. Whether you bring it forward bent, straight, you don't have to go to a big old split, anything like that. You just wanna really think about closing the, the gap or the angle at this front hip. I don't want this to be a big 180. I want it to be closer to a 90 degree angle with my butt sticking back, okay? So really important is the placement of that inside leg, okay? And then this is where we get into, as I said at the beginning, our points of contact. It ends up with it more on the side of my thigh not the back of my thigh, okay? So when in doubt, stick your butt up. Okay, so that's the first part. We start out with our spin, our hips are back behind the pole. When you're ready to transition, bring the inside leg forward. What your outside leg does, you can bring it forward. I generally just leave it back just because I wanna just focus on the one leg and I like the shape, personal preference. When we finally get to the Icarus, that leg will be back, okay? So you might as well just leave it there, okay? So the inside leg has come forward, whoop. We hook the knee. Now, this little part in hooking the knee, I don't know if you noticed when I went to hook at it, my knee need to hook right about where my hand is. I have really long arms, okay? So some of you might not have that issue where you go to hook your knee and you're like, oh, my hand's not in the way at all, okay? But some of you, depending on you know, length of torso, length of arms, length of legs, you may find that where you want your leg to go, your hand is, and I don't know if you noticed when I went through this one, as so I'm here, when I started to bring my leg up, Initially, my arm was out here, Whoop. brought my leg through. I bent my arm and moved my hand out of the way to create that space, okay? So if you go to put your knee on the pole and you feel like your hand is in the way, don't lower your knee to stay out of the way of your hand. Move your hand up to get out of the way of your knee, okay? Because having your knee in that higher up position is far more important than your hand, okay? So we've established what's going on with that first knee. Once that first leg is in place, Part two, we're gonna to go to our second point of contact here. This first knee is in place, booty is out. You're really thinking, bring your heel to your butt. You don't want this leg down here, so work those hammies. This inside arm, really reach back, okay? So you should kind of feel this movement of, instead of my arm being out here, I wanna squeeze, 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 so I'm really smushing the pole, you know, kind of between my lats and my bicep there, okay? So that's gonna be your other point of contact, number two there, okay? Now, Getting into the third point of contact, which is crucial, is your upper back. Okay, so for this one, and of course, once again, as probably you've heard me say a bazillion times, different shapes, different tricks look different on different bodies. Okay, so some people may be able to do this without as much of a head tilt on this one. Um, so, but I find for this one, it brings me more into the pull. So we've got point of contact two, point of contact three. Crucial one is now my head is gonna come around so I feel it go from this armpit to this shoulder. I don't wanna just have my head here. I wanna think head to the side, and then I actually push my head back into it so it really increases that point of contact on the back of my neck and my traps, okay? As I do that, it's not just a matter of my head going back. I think of sticking my chest out, okay? So a lot of upper back engagement. That's twofold. One, it's gonna increase this point of contact right here, Two, it's gonna increase this point of contact right here, okay? And then an added one, what tends to happen is when we do that, 
my butt tends to stick out a little bit more, which is gonna increase this point of contact down here. So tits for the win, okay? So we've got point one, point two, point three. This last part, before it is like a full-blown legit Icarus. Like you can do an Icarus and still have that hand there, right? But to be a full-blown legit Icarus, that hand comes off. That's the leap of faith. This is where the secret ingredient comes in. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this second leg. Up until this point, we've kind of just left that second leg out in the cold. Don't worry about it. It's gonna stay there. It can go wherever it wants. Really important, before you take this top hand off, and this is going to be the life or death situation of whether you can take that, leg, that second hand off, your second leg that was out here, boop, what tends to happen is, you know, we're focusing all of these legs. This leg is out there. It's not doing anything wrong, but it's not helping. So when you are thinking of being ready to open this top leg, you are going to take this second leg and think of trying to do this. Okay, so picture you're trying to hold a pencil in your butt cheeks, and the only way to hold it there is by squeezing that leg in and crisscrossing that leg. Okay, really important. In doing that, twofold, it helps solidify your weight going towards this leg, which is your contact point. Point two, it keeps this leg out of the wind out here. Okay, because if that leg is out here, it's actually pulling you off the pole. Okay? And in watching it, especially when you're on spin, it's kind of hard to see because it's going around and around and around. It doesn't look like it moves that much, but just that little difference of having your butt be relaxed and clenching your butt and holding that pencil in your butt cheeks will make or break whether this move actually sticks in place. Okay, So before we go through the full demo here, let's talk real quick. When you go to do this, you've got your blind hand grab, your booty is back, Lift the knee to the front, whether it's bent or straight. Hook that knee, pull your heel to your butt. Inside arm reaches back, tits out. Head goes to the other side, tits out. Outside leg, crisscross. Squeeze your butt cheeks like you're trying to hold a pencil in your butt cheeks and don't drop it. From there, when you are ready to let go of this top arm, head is still back. Um, oftentimes it helps to think of looking up towards the ceiling. Okay, because that helps keep our head in the direction it is. Otherwise, we tend to try and like look in the mirror and then that actually rolls us off of the pole. When you do take this arm off, don't put it out here, okay? Part of the reason why we're doing this on spin is centripetal force is helping us. By sticking this hand out here, you just pulled the e-brake. Don't do that, okay? So when you do go to take this hand off, release it and reach back. This is not about shoulder flexibility, okay? If you have tight shoulders and you're like, my arm doesn't go that far, it might just go here. That's fine. But what I don't want you to do is bring it here, bring it here, bring it here, okay? Wherever you took it off, you wanna think, reach back slightly, regardless of flexibility, that motion of reaching back is gonna increase this little bitty point of, uh, point of contact that we have right here, okay? So, all of those things. Are we ready to try it all out? So, Let's put this together with all of those points of contact in mind. We're gonna start from our blind hand grab. If that blind hand grab feels what well, feels good, point one, point two, point three, squeeze the butt, point four. Got it? All right. And make sure you grip everything up you need to, or at least make sure everything is clean. Personally, I'm a big fan of a clean pole. Just make sure it's fully clean. If you need to add a little extra grip enhancement, do what you gotta do, okay? So, pirouette, stick the booty out, knee hooks, arm back, squeeze the butt cheeks, and arm. Regrab. you can take that outside arm, reach towards your armpit, and unwind. Ta-da! And that is your Icarus. So, play around with this one. Have some fun with this one. Like I said, that key hold on this is all about that butt cheek squeeze at the end. That is the make or break it on getting that top arm off. I mean, of course, the other three points of contact have to be in place first, but that little butt squeeze at the end, I'm telling you, it's magical. So have some fun with this one. If it's feeling comfortable, put it together in a combo. Let's see what you got. Mm -hmm. 